Hi, I'm Marcos Pazzani Brunella, and in this video, I'm going to present our work HXDP, Efficient Software Packet Processing on FPGA Nix. This has been a joint work among different institutions ranging from industry to academia. And the background of this work is that network packet processing is ubiquitous. Just think about 5G deployments and data center networks. Network processing is typically done on commodity servers with general purpose CPUs, which are facing a servation in their underlying scaling laws. So the tendency is to save CPU clock cycles for tasks that can be done really elsewhere. Thus pushing network processing to dedicated network accelerators, which vary in size, power requirements, and the underlying technology. And FPGAs have been targeted as a candidate technology for such network accelerators due to their reprogrammability features and the opportunity to combine different building blocks to create more complex network functions. And FPGAs are also being deployed inside data center servers as machine learning accelerators and in 5G radio access networks. However, the problem with FPGA-based NICs is that to implement even a simple network function, we need to iterate many times through code, simulation, and synthesis before getting the bitstream that implements our network function. This is a tedious process which requires a lot of hardware expertise. And to overcome this limitation, the research community has divided into two branches. The first one, which is developing high-level synthesis tools to implement very expressive network functions faster. But still, they require a certain degree of our knowledge to use that. And on the other branch, we focus more on the much, uh, much action abstraction, which provides a faster programming. That's more network function logic focus, but still they expose an exotic or limited programming model. So, how we overcome that. But the common ground of both approaches is that they assume the FPGA to be dedicated entirely to networking tasks. Instead, our approach is to take the eBPF infrastructure, which is a packet filter implemented inside the Linux kernel, and recreate the same execution environment inside the FPGA and offload completely the execution to the FPGA. And before diving deep into our architecture, we need to understand how ABPF works. So what is ABPF? ABPF is an in-kernel virtual machine that executes ABPF programs. Programs are written in restricted C and compiled to a BPF bytecode. Then they are injected by calling the BPF syscode. They are passed through a verifier and optionally they are just in time compiled for the target architecture. And finally, they are attached to one of the many ABPF hooks inside the kernel. And we focused our attention into one particular ABPF hook, which is called Express Datapath or XDP. XDP is one of the many ABPF hooks and it's placed at the earliest point in the stack. And it's not a kernel BFS technique such as DPDK and it doesn't relinquish CPU cores. Instead, the CPU load scales with the network traffic load and it's completely transparent to the host system. And we can now explore what an XDP program lifecycle looks like. And an XDP program is triggered every time a packet arrives. And as first thing, the ABPF environment creates the context data structure for the packet, which will contain all the relevant pointers to packet data and metadata. After that, the program parses the packet header and then interacts with the host system by means of map paths on or helper function calls. And finally, the program rewrites the packet header and takes the forwarding decision, which can be as simple as just drop the packet or more complex as to redirect the packet to a particular CPU. And putting all together, we can see that XDP sits along very nicely with ABPF. So our idea was to take ABPF with XDP all the infrastructure and recreate the very same architecture on the FPGA. And we do so by implementing all the relevant map types and helper function as dedicated hardware blocks. And by executing optimized ABPF bytecode inside a custom built CPU called Sephiroth, thus creating what we call the hardware express data path. 
the original BPF bytecode passes through our compiler and gets optimized for the execution inside Sephiroth. And diving more deeply inside our architecture, we can distinguish two very different operational phases. And at configuration time, we populate the Sephiroth's instruction memory with the optimized ABPF bytecode and we configure the maps memory. The system then passes into runtime. And every time a packet arrives, it gets selected by the active packet selector and transferred inside the packet buffer memory. And at the end of the transfer, the active packet selector creates the contents data structure and triggers the execution of Sephiroth. At this point, Sephiroth starts fetching optimized BPF instruction from its instruction memory. And as execution goes by, it may call an upper function, access maps, read and write packet data, and metadata. Once Sephiroth terminates its execution, it asserts the exit signal, pots the content of the error zero to the active packet selector, which will implement the forwarding decision. Talking about challenges, in this design, we face two very tough ones. The first one is that HXDP occupancy must be small so that a designer can fit multiple accelerators on the FPGA. And the most complex one, which was to get the HXDP performance comparable to the ones of an X86 CPU core. This was particularly hard since we are clocked at a frequency which is at least 10 times lower than what is an X86 CPU. And for the first challenge, we assumed that the FPGA was also used for other hardware accelerators. And this forced us to keep the hardware simple by adapting the instruction set architecture to the hardware design. For example, a superscalar approach for the ABPF executor would have been too resource angry. So we opted for a very long instruction word CPU, moving the instruction level parallelism extraction complexity from the hardware to the software. And we brilliantly achieved that. In fact, we managed to keep HXDP resource utilization low, occupying less than 10% of the overall logic on NetFPGA SUMI, running at 156.25 MHz, which is the line rate frequency of its internal data path. Making HXDP fast enough was the particular pain point of this work, since an x86 CPU and an FPGA are two very different domains. In fact, while an x86 CPU is tweaked for sequential speculative execution, an FPGA is well suited for massively parallel execution. So how we managed to fill this gap? We attacked the problem at three levels. Firstly, we execute the BPF bytecode inside a specialized VLAW core so that all the complexity of code parallelization is demanded to our compiler. For the other design, we follow simple design principles, such as a short pipeline stages, four parallel execution lanes for the ABPF code, and a constant one clock cycle latency for each of the operation that can be performed inside HXDP. At the code level, which is where we put so much effort, we extended the ABPF instruction set architecture to support our custom instructions, and we safely removed unnecessary instructions from the code since we could provide that functionality directly in hardware. And to illustrate code optimization, we will use a simple BPF program which simply tracks uh, UDP connections. Here on the left, we have the restricted C of the UDP firewall, while on the right, the relevant ABPF bytecode. Here, to initialize data structures which are going to be pushed in the BPF stack, LLVM uses R4 to zero write the relevant location. But in our case, providing an already zeroed stack is trivial to do in Argo. Thus, we remove these four instructions from execution. Here, the argument of the conditional statement gets compiled as two different instructions. But we can simply create a new class of instructions that support also the immediate operand along with the source register, thus merging the two instructions into one. And again, this is trivial to implement in hardware and to recognize at optimization time. Another recurrent pattern in a BPF programs is the boundary check on the packet header. Also, this can be safely implemented in hardware, thus saving this costly branch instruction. Also, 
many applications need to access the source and destination MAC addresses inside the Ethernet frame. Unfortunately, a BPF does not provide a six byte load and store and translates those memory accesses into inefficient sequences of two bytes load and stores. We were able to extend the instruction set architecture by encoding three new instructions, which sit along very nicely with the other load and store instructions which are available. Another important extension was to embed the forwarding decision inside the exit instruction, rather than the store it into register zero and then exiting. This, other than reducing the instruction count, allows the compressed exit to be detected at the very first stage of the Sephiroth's pipeline, just saving the other three clock cycles. We can now discuss the performance of all these single optimizations. In fact, we have run a detailed analysis of the single optimizations on all the Linux kernel examples. And as depicted in the graph, by removing boundary checks, introducing three operands instruction and six byte load and stores, provides a significant boost in instruction reduction. By putting all the optimizations together, we have evaluated the impact on the original eBPF bytecode by taking the original length, applying all the optimization, parallelize the code, and finally obtaining the very long instruction words which are optimized and parallelized. By analyzing the instruction level parallelism and comparing the results with the performance of the x86 just-in-time compiler, we can state that the x86 just-in-time compiler mostly expands code while all our optimization decreases significantly the resulting well-aw bytecode. In fact, we achieve a 2.31 average instruction per clock across all the examples, which is comparable to the one that an x86 CPU core achieves at runtime. And if you're interested more, I invite you to read more in the paper. We then tested our entire system by first running throughput micro benchmarks. Performance here is measured in million packets per second and traffic is UDP minimum packet size. And the traffic is generated at 40 gigabit per second. And as you can see from the first two graphs from the left, we are always able to outperform an x86 CPU core running at 3.7 gigahertz, which is quite astonishing for a simple WLIW core running at a frequency which is 20 times lower. However, when we start to access some maps, the memory hierarchy of an x86 system kicks in and we're slightly back at 3.7 gigahertz core, but still higher than one clock at 2.1 gigahertz. We then tested the Linux kernel example, and as shown in the graph, we are able to achieve the same performance of an x86 core clocked at 2.1 gigahertz for programs that do not require intense interaction with the OS, such as map successes and helper function calls. Finally, we've tested our architecture with real world application, which are the more interesting ones, such as the UDP firewall we've seen in the optimization section and Catran, which is a Facebook load balancer implemented in ABPF. And also here, we are able to outperform an x86 core running at 2.1 gigahertz. In terms of latency, we have included also measurements done on the network flow processor from Nitrona. And as expected, we are 10 times lower than an x86 implementation since we do not cross the PCI Express pass, and still we are lower than the Nitrona card. Concluding, we have presented HXDP, which is an implementation of the ABPF infrastructure on FPGAnix. In this particular case, we've implemented HXDP on NetFPGA Sumi. The benefit of this architecture is that it is able to execute unmodified ABPF programs, requiring very few hardware resources. In terms of performance, it can free up CPU cores by providing similar performance with a latency that is 10 times lower. As future work, we want to dive deep into compiler optimization by implementing a smarter memory access management. We experimented with some last minute handwritten optimization, which were able to scale up forward in throughput. Also, most XDP programs require packet parsing, which is a task that can be safely demanded to a dedicated hardware block, thus removing other previous instructions from the execution. And to increase throughput, we can trade some of the area by implementing more WLIW CPUs in parallel. We experimented with a stop which consisted of two cores, 
but we have soon recognized that this will introduce also um, memory synchronization over red since we need to serialize all accesses to sharing memory locations. And finally, we are reasoning on the possibility to transfer some of the fixed functionalities as separate into a custom build chip by greatly improving all the performance of the system. And as a final notice, HXDP is open and maintained by Axbrid, and you can find all the details in this GitHub link. And at the GitHub link, you will see all the relevant artifacts for the paper, which have been evaluated by the Artifact Evaluation Committee as available, functional, and reproduced. Thanks for watching, and I will be really happy to take questions in the question and answer session of OSDI.